The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. A number of different gardening methods uh, that people may not be familiar with or have heard but don't quite fully understand the, the, the means or the methods to that particular type of gardening method. Absolutely. And sometimes even maybe you might have heard the, the word, but you call it something else. Right. So we'll start with the, I guess, the most well-known. Yeah, ground, ground. raised bed, and, and, and containers. Right. Your, your big three there. Sometimes people call containers growing them in pots. In pots, pots yeah. Pots. But, uh, maybe and, a regional or um, a geographical thing, like a, 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 a country thing. That might, you know, like, like a European, Europeans use terminology in gardening very different than what we do in the States. Right. Yeah. Or they just, a container, maybe they think a container is like enclosed, um, you know, like a food container. Or something. Right. So anyway, so ground gardening, that's the, the uh, probably the most well known where you take and you plant some plants in the ground. Most of, uh, most cost effective. Yeah. Assuming that you have done your due, your, your due diligence and made sure there's no toxicity in the soil by getting a soil test from SoilSavvy.com and making sure that we're all good, that we ha- we're not growing on a previous gas station a lot or some toxicity that has been dumped there. Well, that and say you move into a new home and the previous people had had a garden. Right. And, or, or something else, who knows? But that way, you know, you might then not necessarily about the toxicity. I mean, you can find out about that, but that might be your con- not be your concern. What your concern might be is the soil viable? Is it going to support? What do I need life? to add to it yeah, to get it to where it needs to be? Exactly. Same thing if you happen upon a house with raised beds in the back or wh- wherever um, and you moved in, you might not know what's in those raised beds. Right. And the raised beds probably is one of the most um, instantaneous gardens, but can be more cost up front because you are constructing the, the raised beds, whether it's western red cedar, whether it's pine with some type of water-resistant uh, uh, coating on it, whether a paste or stain or so, uh, treated lumber, or you just take logs and throw down and make a square and put soil in it. Right. The so soil is what's going to get you. Exactly. Some people call those... Um, Above ground gardens, mm-hmm. or elevated, elevated or box box gardens. I but, think. I mean, elevated would be more the garden with, boxes. Yeah, th- those would be more with the 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 unit on on legs, in which would be waist or chest high. But I've I've said raised beds to people, and they literally think that it's like a garden bed that's raised mm-hmm. like high on, on stilts. Yeah. Okay. So, something like an above ground garden can be a good a good term as well. Obviously, the lumber is going to be the most uh, will be expensive and the soil is going to well, it's not expensive it's an investment and the soil will be an investment um, however you're going to boom you know you're going to get good soil if you get it from a reputable source you're going to have an instantaneous garden boom it's right there you don't have to turn the soil over you don't have to work the ground essentially to uh, get that first year's gardening going like if you just went in the backyard like we did many years ago and just started flipping the sod over and creating an in a ground garden, right? And that I think the another thing to think about is the the, up, the upkeep. Yes. So things like weed, yeah, weed, weeds, and then also um, the soil, the soil viability. Mm-hmm. What, it's not necessarily upkeep for worms, but you want to make sure that the worms want to come hang out in your garden. It's not a build it and walk away. No, definitely not. And I think that's another thing is maybe the process of, of how you turn the soil over. Are you going to borrow your neighbor's or friend's tiller, or are you going to do it by going to shovel? Use, you're going to use the mantis tiller, or are you going to do it by shovel? You're not going to do it at all. You're just going to do minimal soil disturbance. So container but gardening. Are, but are you going to do It depends. It depends. Everybody has right. their own uh, philosophy on what they feel is best. So the container garden, a.k.a. Growing in pots, growing in grow bags, grow bags from root maker. Or, yeah, whatever. This is something that is good if maybe maybe you want to try your hand at gardening for the first time, but you don't want to go in your backyard and turn over all the soil, right? And you also don't want to build raised beds. Maybe you have a porch patio deck, something like that. Maybe you just don't. You're like, I don't want these um, these here. So and, and root maker kinda, has very pleasing aesthetic. Grow bags from one to sixty gallons have a white coating on it, so they look really nice. And with Rootmaker, you can save fifteen percent 
off of your order using code radio 23. And then with that, if you've, if you, uh, need seeds, cause we're getting to that time, yep. you can use, go to jungseed.com, J U N G seed.com, use code 10, like the number 10, one zero T G 23. To save 10%. Yep. Save money on your purchases and get more in the ground. Um, And containers can be anything from a grow bag to a bucket, anything with – but you want to have drainage. You want you just don't want to use a big Rubbermaid tub and not have any drainage because then you have a swamp bog rot and a mess. Right. So and you can go as simple as something like five gallon buckets. Yes. Yep. You can again get the root makers. You can go to your local garden center and buy the prettiest terracotta pots that you want with drainage. With drainage, but but either way, you want to use drainage and also you want to think about what what you're growing in. So with that being said. You might think, I'm, I have these old tires. I'm going to grow my old tires. Um, I wouldn't do that for vegetables, for Ed- anything edible. edible. Yeah. But if you have some flowers you want to plant in there, I think that's perfectly fine. Same thing with five-gallon buckets. You want to think about where they came from. You can either just get new ones from you know, the big box store. Or if you have somebody who wants to pass them on, maybe only use ones that were used to store food items. Delis and Chinese restaurants are good sources to find buckets at either free or very low cost because they are bringing large quantities in five-gallon buckets like soy sauce or pickles in which you can get the buckets for very little. Hydroponic, aquaponic, people may get these or heard these and and are, are confused by the terminology. Hydroponics, you're using nutrients in the water to grow the plants. Aquaponic, you're using fish waste pumped through the root system of the plant in order to feed the plant in order to get it to grow. And then some people will utilize the fish as a as food as well after a certain time frame. Sometimes it's t- tilapia is somewhat often a, a fish that is used in a hydropo- or an aquaponic system. Right. And since the 90s are back. Yes. There was a movie in the 90s where they built a they built a, a place. It was a comedy movie, but they built a place that was a self-sustaining in theory. In theory. And there's a scene where they go, the fish, uh, uh, which means that the, the, they do their business, do their business uh-huh. in the water. And it's the concept of hydroponics. Right. So if done correctly in so, both of these hydroponic or aquaponic, it can be very successful. But you've got it. There's pH levels. You got a, uh, it's a, a pH I'm just level. Saying that yeah. Hydroponics is not a new idea. No, no, it's not. No. It's been around for quite some time. And a lot of greens are growing that way. A lot yeah. of stuff in Canada is growing that way so it's uh it is a great system and there's also the passive hydropon- or, uh, hydropon- hydroponics hydroponics where you cracky get the method little, yeah you get the little net cup you get the the little stone things yeah uh clay pellets clay, clay or clay, pellets. clay balls yeah and then you can grow it in a mason jar right mason jar or in a rubbermaid tub where you don't need a circulation of water you put nutrients in the water and you it's stagnant you just let it sit there and grow Right. There's, so, I mean, it's, it's, there's a few more steps than that, but that's the concept of it. Right. So there's lots of options there, and I think that – and then there's even um, different kits and, and whatnot mm-hmm. you can purchase. But I think that a lot of people think gardening has to be A, dirty, B, complicated, C, take up a lot of space. But there's a lot of options if you don't want to. Right. Um, you've got uh, – another one is – Hugu culture and straw bale gardening are two very unique aspects. Uh, you grow in a straw bale, there's a way of conditioning the straw bale in order to break down the internal properties of it in, do- in order to turn to soil so you can grow inside or grow on the bale and it, the inside of the bale feeds the plant. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Hugu culture is a totally different concept and, and that inv- involves logs and a lot of dirt. Yes. Yep. So it's basically you're letting the log break down, and the the log base becomes the, the or logs. humus, or logs becomes the hum, the growing humus, and that's the hugel culture. It's a I think it's a neat concept. It's something that I know I would like to try. And then the straw gardening is a similar concept because you're letting the straw break down to become the hummus humus, the humus for growing things, vegetables, plants, etc. And then when when these things are spent, when the ro- the log is spent, it just decays back into the earth. And then same thing with the straw bale. So it's in a way almost a, a zero waste 
concept. Not quite, but close. And with hugel culture, you can have big logs and, and covered with a mound of soil, or you can, and it can be two foot or three foot tall, or it can be fifteen and twenty foot tall, and you're growing in the hillside of the of the dirt, and the moisture goes in the. The, the hill absorbed by the log, the log releases as soil needs, the, as the log, log rots, it becomes a sponge and gives and takes. And I've seen them 30 foot tall and it, a big hill, and I've seen them very small. So it, it's a very unique concept that if you have the capabilities to doing either manual or mechanically, it is a way to be sustainable in the watering concept of almost a no water system, no watering needed by you uh, system. And it's a, it's a, it's because it's, it's that big sponge. Right. And that's something like to definitely keep in mind. And this is just some of probably of dozens of methods of gardening. So just because you may be gardening in a way in which we didn't cover doesn't mean that yours doesn't matter at all. Also, what matters, Holly, is what Walton's Incorporated has for us and our listeners. Absolutely. So we are brought to you today by Walton's, our sponsor. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from, canning and preserving your fruits and vegetables is great, but what about the meat? At Walton's, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? That you like? Or you like? <laughs> or your family? Maybe just you. Walton's created MeatGistics.com. They have um, over 15,000 users to help you find out the whys and hows of meat processing. And then if you also go on their website, you'll find meat grinders, sausage stuffers, mixers, spices, etc. Everything that you need for processing, everything but the meat, you can use code GROW50, GROW50 to save 10% off orders of $50 or more. That's waltonsinc.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. 